can you believe the man who single-handedly stopped one of the most dangerous cyber attacks in the world was arrested by the FBI? In today's video, we are going to reveal to you the mysterious chapter of Marcus Hutchins, the hacker who once saved the internet. In the spring of 2017, a young man named Marcus Hutchins was working in a small computer security office in Cardiff, Wales. At just 22 years old, he was already an expert in computer systems and keeping them safe from hackers. Little did he know that his life was about to change overnight. In May of that year, something terrible started to happen all over the world. A really dangerous computer virus called WannaCry was causing a lot of trouble. It sneaked into computers in hospitals, schools, and businesses. Once inside, it locked away all their files and demanded payment in a digital currency called Bitcoin. Marcus saw the chaos and felt a strange tingle of curiosity. As he looked closer at the WannaCry virus, he noticed something peculiar about it, like a secret door in a villain's fortress that even the villain didn't know about. It was a weak spot that he could potentially use to stop the virus. With a mixture of excitement and determination, he started working on this. After hours of hard work, he finally had it, a tool that could exploit the flaw, and he released it to the public for free. Within hours, Hutchins' tool started to stop the WannaCry attack. Within hours, the tide of the attack began to turn. The relentless spread of the virus slowed, then stopped. Everyone was safe from the virus attack without spending a penny. Suddenly, Marcus was hailed as a hero lauded for his ingenuity and quick action in the face of an unprecedented crisis. So why was Marcus, after this heroic work, arrested by the FBI? Keep watching this video to the end as we reveal his fascinating journey. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our future exciting videos. Marcus Hutchins was born in 1994 in a small lovely town by the sea in Devon, England. While other kids his age were playing outside, Marcus loved spending time with computers. His interest began when he was just a little boy. He was fascinated by how a simple machine could do so many things. While most of his contemporaries used computers to play games or do homework, Marcus was interested in what was happening behind the screen. He wanted to know how the games worked, how the computer knew what to do. When Marcus was 12, he got his first computer. It was not a shiny new one, as you might have at home. Marcus built his own computer from old parts he found and bought. In high school, Marcus began to learn about computer security. He wanted to know how to protect computers from people who wanted to cause trouble or harm. He became very good at this. He was so good, in fact, that he began to gain a reputation as one of the most knowledgeable people in the world about computer safety and hacking. In 2013, Hutchins created a blog called Malware Tech, where he wrote about his experiences as a hacker and a security researcher. The blog quickly became popular and Hutchins soon gained a reputation as one of the most knowledgeable people in the world about malware and hacking techniques. Marcus Hutchins quickly ascended the ranks in the world of cybersecurity. He was snapped up by Cryptos Logic, where he turned his skills towards shielding others from cyber threats. His expertise also guided him to collaborate with various organizations. He worked with the HoneyNet Project, probing the weaknesses in computer networks, and the SANS Institute, honing the skills of future cyber defenders. He even worked with the Electronic Frontier Foundation, safeguarding digital freedoms. Now, let us tell you about another computer virus, namely Kronos Trojan. The Kronos Trojan, as the name suggests, was indeed a Trojan horse, created in 2014, an ill-intentioned gift that was introduced to millions of computers around the globe. Named after the titan of Greek mythology, Kronos was designed to steal something precious, banking information. The sneaky part was how Kronos got onto the computers. It was typically hidden inside something that seemed safe, like an email attachment or a download from the internet. When someone opened the email or downloaded the file, Kronos would quietly sneak onto their computer. It was a digital version of the Trojan horse from ancient history. Once Kronos was on a computer, it would wait. It would wait until the person used their computer for online banking. Then it would wake up and start recording what the person typed, like their username and password for the bank. Kronos was very successful. In just a short time, it had sneaked onto millions of computers all over the world. It had the potential to steal from countless people, and that's what made it so dangerous. So, how is this Kronos Trojan related to our story? 
The Kronos Trojan in its coating was very similar to WannaCry ransomware, which was stopped by Marcus. Despite their distinct functions, they shared similarities that made them brothers in arms in the world of cyber threats. Both were like digital phantoms, silently infiltrating systems without alerting the users. Kronos, a master of disguise, quietly logged banking details, while WannaCry slithered through the back doors, encrypting files with ruthless efficiency. Their means of transmission were strikingly similar, too. Both would often hide in seemingly harmless email attachments or phony software updates, waiting for unsuspecting users to unknowingly unleash them. Given these shared characteristics, it's not surprising the FBI connected the dots between these two pieces of malware and the young British computer whiz, Marcus Hutchins, especially when he stepped forward with a solution to the WannaCry crisis. The FBI realized, in fact, it was Marcus who invented the Kronos, and with his knowledge, he was able to stop WannaCry. One warm August day in 2017, Marcus Hutchins was all set to go home to England from a big computer meeting called DEFCON, where he was praised hugely for stopping WannaCry. But then, out of nowhere, the FBI showed up at the airport. They had prepared six charges against Marcus, all related to hacking. Of course, the primary one was for spreading the Cronus malware a few years back. The FBI had been looking into a site called Alpha Bay, and they found evidence of Kronos being sold there. They also had copies of chats Marcus had on the dark web, proving he was linked to the software. The FBI's argument in the court was based on the fact that he had used the same programming techniques to create both the Kronos Trojan and the tool that stopped the WannaCry attack. The FBI tried to show that Hutchins had the ability to create malware and that he had done so in the past. It was a surprising twist in Marcus's journey, from the quiet streets of England to the glaring lights of an American courtroom. Two long days passed before the judge finally spoke. His verdict? Marcus could go free, but not without conditions. He set the bail at a hefty $100,000 and commanded that Marcus should wear an electronic bracelet that would always show where he was. He also asked Marcus to hand over his passport. On August 22, 2017, Marcus stepped outside the prison. He was free for then, but with some big strings attached. He was to stay in the United States, far from his home in England. He could not use any computers or gadgets without a green light from his probation officer. He wasn't allowed to speak to any witnesses or discuss the case with anyone. He was still awaiting his trial, accused of creating and spreading the Kronos malware. Finally, on the 26th of July, 2019, a significant decision was made by Judge Joseph Peter Statmuller. He believed that Marcus had left his mischief-making days behind and was using his skills for good long before he found himself in court. Recognizing this change of heart, the judge allowed Marcus to go free, but with one condition, he had to stay under supervision for one more year. It was a moment of relief, a moment of recognition, and a new chapter in Marcus's eventful life. There you have it. Marcus's story is one of contrast, a blend of light and shade. His story serves as a powerful reminder of the duality of technology and the thin line between curiosity and responsibility. So, what do you think about Marcus's story? Is he really a modern-day hero or a villain who managed a lucky escape? Let us know in the comment box and subscribe to our channel to get exciting videos like this. Thank you for watching.